Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and this is a very special episode because I have on the phone, on the line right now, David Kawas from Classic Flicks. David, what's going on with you? Hey, Heath. This is just a very exciting day. Uh, today, we are launching our crowdfund campaign to preserve and restore The Little Rascals, uh, one of the... Uh, the most well-known film properties uh, in the history of cinema, really, and uh, really a cross-cultural product. And we are launching a crowdfund campaign to preserve and restore them. And uh, so I appreciate you taking the time to have me on today. I am so glad to have you here. You know that I'm a fan of the classic flicks brand, what you guys are doing. It's legitimate... Uh, preservation of I mean you've been doing this with so many of your releases the the viewer can see over my shoulder my classic I'm pointing to my classic flicks collection on the shelf behind <laughs> me um, the the noir this the Hal Roach streamliners you have done more for the Hal Roach catalog I think than anybody that I can think of and so now to talk about the little rascals aka our gang you got news the news is is little rascals being restored tell us all about it well uh, as you may know, there were 80 Hal Roach sound shorts started in uh, 1929 with Small Talk and went all the way through 1938 to Hide and Shriek. Prior to that, there were the Silence, and then after that, there were the MGM shorts. And we have licensed all 80, and our plan is to put them out all on, of course, preserve them and restore them, give them the classic flex treatment, and put them out on DVD and Blu-ray. And uh, additionally, we've licensed a number of the silence as well and plan to put those out and restore them on uh, DVD and Blu-ray. All, all the silence don't survive and not all of the silence are still under copyright. Um, I haven't researched them all, but a good number of them have fallen into public domain. I got but you. we've got what we have that, that is copyright and we have the rights to those. So I know that for this to happen, this requires some involvement from those that want this to happen. Can you tell us how supporters, film pres film fans, tell us how film fans can be yeah. involved in this? Well, film fans can get involved going to uh, Indiegogo, type in Little Rascals, and uh, make a pledge to donate to the campaign. And what you're doing, you're actually literally preserving the history of these beloved shorts and you can see in uh in the videos we've done like you talked about heat the preser kind of preservation we've done we have before and after uh restoration comparisons on, on all our films and then on the indiegogo video uh the page part of me you can actually see what these will look like it looks they look stunning it looks like uh, so far on Lazy Days and Dogs as Dogs, the two that we've restored so far, uh, they, they look like different films. They look so beautiful, and the fans are going to be pleased. And by donating to this campaign, you can help with a better presentation, get these out sooner, preserve them before deterioration happens. Because, as you know, especially nitrate film elements, they're just in you know constant state of decay there every day goes by uh there's a chance that you know they might get worse and worse and worse and so that's what this campaign is for to get these out to give them the classic flicks treatment in terms of the restoration and to prevent them from decaying further prior to their digitization that any anyone who donates 50 dollars or more to the campaign they're going to get a blu-ray or dvd of their choice and uh it will have at least the first 22 shorts on uh, in the set from small talk to dogs is dogs and you as uh, you know fans can see from the restorations that we have so far they are stunning we're going to have a special premium packaging for this campaign only so anyone who donates to this campaign is going to get premium packaging we haven't worked out exactly what that's going to be but they won't be able to get it uh, after when it goes after market and wide retail. Additionally, the, there is, are going to be subtitles on these. And I know a lot of people love their subtitles, and I, I do as well. I'm not 
uh, hearing impaired, but I, yeah. I like my subtitles, and so all these are also going to be subtitled as well. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, subtitles are very important. I hear back from people a lot. That's something that um, is not always included, but almost always missed. So that's exciting to hear. Uh, is there? Can you give us like a time frame on when you expect these? If the financing goes according to plan, as we will do our best to make sure that it does, what kind of a re- like time frame uh, might these see a return to the to the investors? Uh, a time frame we're looking at early next year. So wow. Uh, March, yeah, we're looking at, at March for the first volume, and, um, you know, it could be February, it could be April, but that's uh, kind of like an in-between time where we think, according to how these first two have gone so far, according to how acquisition of the materials has gone so far, that we can, um, you know, we can reasonably hit the February, March, April time frame, somewhere in there. That's wonderful. I would not have expected so soon. If this is, like, we don't want to plan too far out. We don't want to, you know, play hypotheticals too mm-hmm. far. But is it possible, if this is the success that we want it to be, that all of these mm-hmm. shorts that you have access to will be restored and available to be on someone's shelf in the future? <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's uh, If this campaign is successful, uh, we actually... We're looking at having all of them out by 2021. If, wow. If, if this campaign is successful, all 80 should be able to make it. Now, you know, there's always issues with the materials. Getting them, you know, the, the, the film manifest that lists the title as being, you know, on the shelf isn't actually there. So when you have 80 different assets to deal with, and then you have three, four, five, ten different assets for each film, it, you know, it's a very involved project. So yeah. uh, if everything goes according to plan uh, with expected delays, because there's always going to be uh, some delays with these, uh, we can get all 80 shorts out by uh, end of 2021. That's that's unbelievable. That's fantastic. Uh, this is a call to action for the fans. And... You know, from my seat at Serial at Midnight, I see a lot of the feedback that comes in and something that I think is maybe not always apparent is how some things like what you're talking about, like the like the restoration of Africa's screams, uh, so there are so many things that are so dependent upon the community themselves. You know, so community is something we talk a lot about here at Serial at Midnight, and I know it's easy to think about like, well, you know, these are probably some major studio will we'll pay for the financing of these. If we want it, you know, uh, so-and-so will take care of it. But we are at a point now for what, like, what you want to do. This is reliant on the involvement of the fans. And so um, it's, it's now more important than it's ever been for us to step up and help make these things possible because it doesn't happen without the support from us. Does that, do you agree with that statement? Well, I mean, I think the current DVD sets of our gang out there is perfect evidence of that so why the original film elements were not used in those in the dvd releases i can't tell you but i can tell you that in dealing with the larger corporate entities they're not fans they're really they're just you know and and of course i'm in the business to make profit profit is good but they're just not fans they're more interested in putting something out and turning a quick profit than getting it right. Well, at Classic Flicks, we get it right. And, you know, as you mentioned with Africa Screams, which was a great uh, restoration done by uh, Bob Furman at 3D uh, Film Archive, and we partnered with them on it, um, that was about the fans. And the same thing with this, this is about the fans. And so it's, it's something that uh, everybody can be involved in and really needs to be involved in. And not just, you know, just uh, this project, which of course we want, but just in general, classic cinema is something that, you know, smaller entities and fans more and more have to get involved in. Because if they don't, it's just uh, never be released or it's gonna just be in the older inferior versions. Yeah, I mean, it makes total sense. Well, this is what we need to know to, uh, as I say, this is our call to action. This is the path laid before us. I'm gonna put links to the indie it's indiegogo and i'll put i'll put links to all of that in the description of this video so people can easily find it without having to go hunt or search uh just click straight through and it'll take you to the page when it's uh when it's ready to go do you have anything else that you have in the pipeline that you could tell us about 
Oh, yeah, we've got some great stuff coming up. We've got uh, Zenobia coming up, which, you know, recently, it, um, you know, got references as the Elephant Movie is what it's kind of known as. Yeah. Uh, that is, is Oliver Hardy, Harry Langdon. It's a great little film. Um, you know, Hardy, obviously, when uh, Laurel was in a dispute with Hal Roach, did this film uh, with Langdon, and it's a cute little film. And it, it's like just Hal Roach materials in general, they just were never well cared for. They, they, they're not like a major studio, you know, like a Fox or Universal. They've, they've preserved a lot of their stuff uh, really well in most cases. Uh, Columbia, same thing with Sony. But Hal Roach materials has never, never been <laughs> preserved well. And so we got this, we scanned it, it looked rough, but after our restoration, which is 98% complete right now, it looks, uh, it looks fantastic. And so fans are going to be excited. Uh, we've also got a Night in Casablanca, of course, the Marx Brothers film, which is just a fun romp. And it's a later film, but it's really a fun, fun uh, movie. That's that's exciting. Well, we can't. We will be covering those, all of the stuff that we're talking about in this particular episode. We will be on the uh, the cutting edge of covering those releases as soon as we can. I'm so excited about them. I. I love the dedication to classic cinema that you have brought with your company. Um, it's something that being able to be a part of it as a fan is so important. You know, these movies are not always uh, the, the movies, the TV shows, the shorts. They're not always um, the, the hottest topics for some of the film community. But when people discover them, I think we all discover that comedy is timeless in so many of these stories the human stories that take place in these movies it doesn't matter how many years it's been good stuff is just good stuff and it's always good stuff and i have a shelf full of this good stuff because of what your company you and your company is doing and now we get a chance to be a part of that so i'm so excited about it uh is there anything well, else you, you want to uh, hey my pleasure is there anything else you want to talk about before we let you go or did we cover it all uh well you know i just kind of want to give you and your fans a little heads up on something that we haven't announced. Okay. Uh, just kind of give you a scoop here. We actually have a 1949 Orson Welles film, Black Magic, coming out on Blu-ray. And so that's something that, you know, is just uh, a, a neglected Welles film. And uh, it's we're going to get the classic flicks treatment. And I think fans are going to be excited about that. I am. So, I lit up like a Christmas tree when you said that. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> More Orson Welles is a good thing for everybody. Well, David, thank you so much for coming by to talk to us about this, about this campaign. Uh, this is on us, you guys. If we want these little rascals shorts to be restored and to look as good as they can and to be preserved for future generations, for us and for beyond, uh, it's up to us to take care of this. So that is that's what we got to do. We got to support this. So I will support it. I hope everyone out there will support it as well. David, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this. All right, Heath. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Until next time, thank you guys for watching this video. And until next time, I will catch you later.